Rowan here and today we're going over the fan favorite hammer. Before we begin, I need your help. Head over to Instagram. We have a poll going if you like these new 2019 truck stop whites. There's a lot of hate and a lot of love. Let's see where you stand. For the hammer, just like the scuba and the forehand, it's your normal grip here. Two fingers on each side of the rim. We're going to get it squeezed as tight as possible because the hammer is all about spin, just like every other throw and ultimate. We're going to bring our elbow straight back. This is going to start to open up this window where we can generate a whip up top. We don't want to overthrow the hammer. Just like a forehand, it's really wrist based. You can get a decent 20, 30 yard hammer just by snapping your wrist from up here like so. How I learned to throw a hammer was with Alex Cooper 20 yards apart just throwing these blades back and forth. Once you develop this snap, this blade here, then we can start to rock our arm into the hammer. A couple small points on the hammer. Because we have a forehand and a backhand, one of the benefits to this throw is adding a new release point. So we don't want to throw it flat from up here. We do want to give it a little arc so now it's really tough to stop as the defender. Okay, it's not a flat throw, it's more of an arc like the scuba. The further we want to throw it, the more arc we have to put on. Another change when we want to add distance to the hammer is the angle of release. We can keep a short range hammer almost 45 degrees on the release. The further we throw it, or the more upwind we have to throw, the more steep we want to bring the edge. It's going to naturally turn over here, and if we release it too flat, then it's just going to tail off to the side. Another less talked about important angle on the hammer is the flight angle. A lot of times we've all seen a hammer go up and just helix off to the side. That's when we over pronate our wrist and that disc kind of goes up into the air too steep. We want to make sure that the flight angle is forward and we can put power into that. We don't want our power going here, up and off to the side. Again, we have this angle where we can control kind of the edge and then this small angle can control the flight path. We want to keep this one pretty down to add the power. Now that we have the edge of a hammer and the flight path, let's talk about some of the uses. It's a great throw for a force flick to get the disc to the break side. A lot of times defenses are going to poach off into this open side lane. That's when we're just going to find the hammer to the break side. Another great place for the hammer is the zone. One of the benefits to this throw is it gets to where it's going fast. So defenses don't have time to react. So if you're playing against the zone and you have an open threat, you can just hit it quickly. A couple of advanced tips for the hammer is that you can adjust this angle here with your wrist, elbow, or body. Some players actually prefer the flat hammer. That's only if you can generate enough spin to where it holds its shape. If you're not getting a lot of spin, that's when it's going to tail off. But if you feel like you're getting the power and spin, you can start to play with the shape of the hammer. The higher it goes can be good at getting the disc over the defense, but if you have somebody open and you don't want to throw it up, you can throw that flat fastball that gets there fast. Again, when we're developing this throw, just grab a partner 10, 15 yards and just work on this snap here, even if you want to throw it at 90 degrees and have them catch some blades. That's where you develop the snap and the power, and then you can start to practice all the different edges, bringing your elbow in, tilting your body to the side, and even bringing your wrist down a little bit. Thanks for checking out the hammer. Head over to Instagram and let me know what you think about the jerseys. Let me know what you want to see next. Rone.